Good morning! This is Teacher Asha once again. And today we will continue with our study on the book of Isaiah. Before we start, I want all of you to have your Bibles ready. Make sure it is in front of you and open to Isaiah chapter 53. Ready? Before we start, let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for each day of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us the past week. And we thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can gather together once again to study your word. Help us, Lord, that we will understand and we will know how great you are and that our lives, we could live the way you want. Help us, help each one of us here that we will be quiet, that we will open our hearts, our minds as we study. We put this time into your hands. In your name we pray. Amen. So, our verse for today can be found in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 and we will read it together. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. One more time. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. Who is Isaiah talking about? But he was pierced. Who was that he? Who? Oh, Jesus. Isaiah was talking about Jesus, pierced for our transgressions, for our wickedness, for our sins, for our mistakes. He was crushed for our iniquities, for our wrongdoings, you know, for our since the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his sufferings we are healed Isaiah here in your Bibles it is in the Old Testament here. in my book I will show you here Isaiah and remember Isaiah lived during the Old Testament time and he was talking about Jesus. Huh? He was pierced, Jesus. And that was, and that is in the book, the birth of Jesus. We can see it in Matthew, 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 in the New Testament. And in between this, it is more, more than seven hundred years, more than seven hundred years. But Isaiah wrote that verse here in this book 700 years before it happened. That is what we call a prophecy. Prophecy is something, a, a message from God about something that will happen in the future. Can you see the wonder of our God? Things that will happen in the future 700 years after but he told it to Isaiah during Isaiah's time. Today we will learn about more prophecies in the book of Isaiah. We are now here. This is the Old Testament. The New Testament is here in the second part. And we are the blessed ones. We are here. Here. Now we, we know about the Old. We know about the New. We are now here. But during Isaiah's time, here, they do not know what is happened here in the New Testament. Of course, it hasn't happened yet. So, when Isaiah tells these words to the people, when Isaiah told these words to the people, what do you think? Was it easy for him? Will the people listen? Wow. Today, we will learn more about the prophecies in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah lived 
during the year 739 BC before Christ was born. And during his time, the nation Judah seemed to be strong and wealthy. People just do anything they want. But Isaiah saw signs of great danger. Last week, we learned God called him to, to share messages to his people, to be his prophet, to be his messenger. We can see in chapter 1, verse 2, I will read for you. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children, meaning the Israelites, his people, and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me, against God. The ox knows his master, the donkey his owner's manger, but Israel does not know, my people do not understand. You can see the heart of God here. He was saying the animals, they know their master, but his own people, they do not know him anymore. Yes, they still pay lip service to him. They still kept an outward appearance, but inside their heart, it is not real. God knows what is in their heart. So the Lord appeared to Isaiah in a vision to warn the people, to warn them to repent. So today we will study about uh, more of Isaiah and the, the prophecies that are in this book. It is the book with the most prophecies. Wow. In, uh, let us uh, study some of them. Open your book Bibles to Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. We will read together. We will also read some New Testament messages. But you do not need to open it to the New Testament. You just keep your Bibles open to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That is the first prophecy of Isaiah. Imagine, even before Jesus was born 700 years earlier, Isaiah wrote this word. It was already prophesied to him by God. So you see, our God, He is the God of the past. He is the God of the present during the time of Isaiah. And He is also the God of the future. He knows what will happen in the future. Okay? So in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 to 23, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Who is that prophet? It's Isaiah. Okay, continue. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Wow. The Lord told Isaiah during his time, and after 700 plus years, this thing happened. Now, the reality, we are blessed now because we have the Bible with us and we know what happened. So let us turn our Bibles now to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. Verse 2 states, He, he is Jesus. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. During the time of Isaiah, he told about the boyhood of Jesus. Jesus grew up among his chosen people, the Jews, because he was a Jew himself. And this uh, verse says that his beginnings were humble. He was an ordinary child. He was a good, obedient boy to his parents. So for this reason, we can see that he can truly identify with mankind. And uh, we will continue verse 3, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. He was despised and rejected by men, 
a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. So even before Jesus was born, in the book here, we, he, it was prophesied to Isaiah that Jesus will be despised and rejected by men. Now he would suffer. Did this all happen? Uh, let us check. Matthew chapter 27 verses 28 to 31. Let us read together. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They, who are they? The Roman soldiers. They strip him and put a scarlet robe on him. Who is that him? Jesus. And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him, make fun of him, laugh at him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and uh, took the staff and struck him in the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Can you imagine, just imagine the sufferings of Jesus. Why? did it has to happen to him let us continue so isaiah during his time he prophesied about jesus being despised and rejected and we can see in matthew how jesus suffered now the roman soldiers stripped him but before all this happened Remember who shouted, crucify him, crucify him, who shouted those words? His own people, the Jews, his own people shouted those words. That, is, that was why he had to be crucified. Let us continue verses 4 to 6. Verse 4, surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. Verse 5, and this is our verse for today, the one we read earlier. But he was pierced for our transgressions, for our sins. He was pierced for our wrongdoings. He was crushed for our iniquities, for our wickedness, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed can you see this is the reason why he has to suffer because of his sufferings we are healed verse 6 we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all Lord has made Jesus you know, the one to suffer for all our sins. I will stop here for now. There is so much more to learn from this very rich book of Isaiah. Next week again, okay? So right now, let us close our eyes in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have. Thank you, Lord, for this chance that we could study your word. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Through it, we learn more about your greatness, more about your love. Help us, Lord, that we could go on with our lives with a change, with a renewed heart, a heart that is ready to serve you, to love you more and more each day. We pray, Lord, for your guidance. Continue to teach us, to guide us each day, that we will be pleasing in your eyes. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Next week, class, do not forget, I will be your teacher again. Bye.